So what we're going to do today is we're going to create another WPF application. This one's going to allow user input, I believe, and allow the display of information in a way that's more interesting than just popping up a message box, which we did last time. So the instructions for it should be in Tutorial C. Or not, really. All right, if we take a peek now, we'll see the instructions, either the PDF or the Word doc. You might want to fix this. So we're going to enter, edit, and test a short program. This one does data entry and conversion using C Sharp. So we're going to create a WPF application just as we did in tutorial B. So we're going to have to have Visual Studio open. We're going to make a C Sharp WPF application. So I'm going to go ahead and launch Visual Studio. And specifically what we're going to do is we've already used the button out of the toolbox. We're going to add a couple more things. We're going to add the button, but we want to add a text box as well and then a label. And if you've done this similar stuff using the NetBeans editor, it's going to seem very familiar, which is good. If you haven't, that's also totally good. So Visual Studio open, new project, C Sharp, Windows Desktop, WPF, I'm going to call this one Tutorial C. I don't think I've been giving them uh, consistent naming conventions. Click OK. It churns for a minute. Churns for two minutes. Patience is a virtue of which I have little. Come on. There we go. All right, so load the designer. You can continue working while the designer is loading in the background. Well, not really, because the designer is what we need. So I'm going to wait until it stops says, no longer says loading designer. All right, now we got our main window. And our toolbox is hidden over here. Honestly, I don't see our toolbox. So, oh, here we go. Toolbox is there. If you can't find it, view toolbox. So we're going to need a button. We're going to need a label. And we're going to need a text box. Let me make absolutely sure I'm following the order that I want. So grab the button and drag it out. Do the same for a text box and do the same for a label. And I don't have a screenshot here. Good thing we're doing it here on video. So I'm going to grab the button, drag it out. Now we have a button on our screen. I'm going to drag a label out. And in this case, it doesn't really matter where we're putting this stuff. So I have a label. And then lastly, a text box. Text box is for data entry. A label can be something that describes a text box or it can show some output. There are many, many other controls we could add as well. A list box for displaying a list of choices or menu, you know, all sorts of things. I think I'll just line these all up vertically. And so, as I mentioned before, if you come and look down here in the XML, which is very similar to HTML, you see each control that we're adding to the window gets its own line in the XML. And you can set settings in it. And there are times when you need to type things in there because you can't find that setting just by clicking on uh, buttons properties or something like that. I'm not even seeing button properties there. It's over here. Okay. Nope. That's not doing it. So anyways, we may wind up going down here and editing stuff. Notice that we can change the margin, the alignment. We can fine-tune it like that, which is something that we weren't doing with our Java NetBeans Forms Designer. 
So setting the properties of our fields. Select the text field, right click on it, and choose properties. Now I didn't see it when I first looked at it. I'm going to do it again. Text box, right click. Properties. <laughs> this is not terribly good. Why would it have disappeared between version 2012 and 2013? Well, it'll take us to where we can edit it in the source code. Pause this fumbling. All right, so they moved it. Subsequent versions. You can no longer right-click on it and choose properties, as far as I know, unless we find a way of editing that menu. Instead, we're going to choose View Properties Window. You can also hit F4. And now we see our properties. So over here... Sorry that the text is small. I don't really have a way of uh, increasing the size of that user interface. We'll see all the properties that are associated with that text box. And we could do the same for the button. You know, if I click on the button, we see different things. If I click on the label, we see different things. If we wanted that label to say something else, I would go to content and I would type something else. Something else. Okay, that's silly. But you get the idea. By changing the properties over here in this properties window, it actually modifies the main window here. We will need to modify the instructions. So we're going to rename the field text input. We're going to give it a better name than what it's got right now. It's just got some kind of default name that was created when we dragged the property out. So here's our text box. I'm going to go to properties Does it in fact have no name? And I want to name it text input. So, no, I'm doing it in the wrong place. Text input. T E X T I N P U T. All right, now if we look down here, that has changed our XML for it. The X colon name for it is now text input. We're going to select the button, edit its properties, and rename it to button calculate. You'll notice that I have a little quirk. I like actually putting the name of the control in the name of the variable that represents it. So if it's a text field, I prefix text onto its name. If it's a button, I prefix the word button on it. Is that strictly necessary? No. You could call it anything you wanted to. You can call it Buzz Lightyear and it would work just as well. So, click on the button, go up to name, and I forgot already what I wanted to call it, which was button calculate. Okay? So, button calculate. And if I look it has added a property to the XML down here. So you can be quite sure that the uh, more experienced developers are, are just down here in the XML code typing things faster than they could find them in the properties panel. Lastly, we're going to select the label and we're going to call it label output. And we're going to change the content of it to result. Right now, content is equal to the words something else. So let's see, click on that, go to name, and call it label output, and the content is going to say result. If you want to do other wacky things like make it in a larger font or change the font size or stuff like that, you can do all that by scrolling down to the properties and picking, you know, other things. That's not really the point of this lesson, but I just want you to be aware of that. I made the result text larger. Going back to the instructions, we have an input field, a button, and a label. So we're going to code what the button does. So when you click the button, some calculation is going to occur. It's going to take input from that text box 
do something to it, and it's going to display it in results. So we double click the button. Double clicking the button will create the method that handles that button, the function that handles that button, inside the source code editor. Going back over here, I'm going to double click on the button. And there we go. We have a method now called button calculate click, meaning that when the calculate button is clicked, it's going to do this stuff. All right, so looking at the source code editor for our button, hopefully you only see one method here. If you see other methods here, then uh, things may get a little crazy. You may want to totally punt and just re delete all the objects on your window and recreate them so that you only see, and then you know, delete all of the extra methods here or all of them, go back to your main window, delete them, and then drop the controls out again, make the changes to them. That'd be my recommendation, at least it was to the people in class. Later on, we'll figure out how to fix those problems as they actually occur. So, what are we going to do to our button calculate? It's going to need to do a couple of things. It needs to get the text out of the text input field. So we're going to have a line of code here. I'm highlighting stuff even though it's in the middle. We haven't typed it all yet. Where SN, which is, stands for string input, is equal to text input dot text. And then we need to turn it into a double. So we're going to do a try parse. We're going to try parsing it to make sure that it's actually valid data. If the conversion fails, then we want to do something else. So it's going to be if be okay, then we are going to calculate our result, which is our input times our input. And we're going to store that in doubt. Then we're going to create a string. After we have created our string, we're going to set our label outputs contents to that string. So at, they type in a number, they click the button. All right, I'm going to try to tuck this over to the side so I have a reminder of what I'm doing as I make these changes into the code editor. All right, and I can make this text larger. Okay, so inside button calculate. We need this. We need two strings. String SIN and string S out, standing for string input and string output. And we need two numbers, DIN, which is the double version of the string that they're going to type in, and D out, which is going to be the double version of the output that we want to display. Now we need to get that input text from that control. So the first line of code that's not a variable declaration, string input is equal to text input dot t e x t. Now if you're used to Java, you're going to wish that there were parentheses after that and you wonder why the method has an uppercase letter. Anyways, um, C sharp is based more on properties than on methods. This is a property of the field. Now let's uh, go ahead and try to parse it. Try parse, what it does, you may remember from other languages that if you try to parse but it's in the wrong format, like it was in Python or Java, and it will crash the program, unless you add exception handling. Well, that's not true of this one. If it cannot parse, if it cannot convert that string into a number, it's just going to set this Boolean value equal to false, rather than crash the program. So, bool be okay is equal to double dot try parse, and this is a function, and it is a method, so we need our parentheses. And here is where you pass in a string, and out is where the data comes back. Notice that out. This represents a variable that can change. It's warning us that try parse is actually going to change the value of DIN. So C sharp is very specific about whether something is an input only variable or an output only variable or if it, you know. 
So we will use the out parameter, meaning that it doesn't care what gets passed into it, but we by gum know that it will be modified. All right, so we've checked the variable. I mean, uh, we've tried to convert it, but we have to make sure that the conversion worked. If B OK equals true, or we could just shorten that to if B OK. So I'm going to do that. If B OK, that means if B OK is equal to true because it's a Boolean value, then we're going to double that value, and then we're going to set our output string. So we already have a variable for our output of it. Not double it, we're going to square it. DOUT is equal to DIN times DIN. We square the value. And then our output string, which we called SOUT, is equal to string.format. And we're going to use a placeholder. So string.format, parentheses, quote, let's use a placeholder. We're going to say zero inside the, inside the curly quotes. Placeholder zero squared. equals placeholder 1. And the values we want to fill in the placeholders are DIN and DOUT. And I'm getting an underlying error here. String does not contain a definition for format. What, what it didn't need to be. Okay, it needs to be capitalized. Let's make that change. String dot format. Okay. So we're three fourths of the way there. We just need to update the string that will store our output that we will then stick into the label. We've already done that. We have created our output string. We're good to go. But if there was an error, we need to warn them that, that there was an error. So here, we're going to make an else. So after our closing brace, else, and I may as well put a comment here. Else, the parsing didn't work. Parse just means converting that double to an integer. I mean to, a, you know, that string to a double. If that didn't work, we're going to display a message box. We really want them to know that they made an error. So, message box dot show, capital S, and we're going to tell them invalid input, input must be a number. And also, we're going to stick that in the output string so that it shows up on the screen even after they've clicked OK on the message box. So invalid input, input must be a number. If I wanted to get that all on one line, I could use a concatenate like this to get that to work. So end quote, beginning quote, must be a number. Now let's set the uh, S out to the same thing. In fact, I should have set S out first and then just set the show. I'm going to make that change. Sorry. It's different from the instructions, but that's why you have a lecture video, huh? S out is equal to in valid input must be a number. And then the message box show is just going to display S out. That makes more sense to me. All right. We've got our output string. We need to change our label to match. So our label variable was called label output, I believe. Label output with a capital O, if, if, if that's what you called it, dot content with an uppercase C is equal to that string S out.
So this is what our function looks like from top to bottom. I'll scroll up top to bottom. And I'm going to put a comment here that this is the end of the button click. Just to make it easier to read. Okay. So from there to there is our button click function. So we declare some variables. We get the input text. We parse. If the parse worked, we multiply that number by itself and store in the output double. Then we create an output string like that. Pause as you need to. Else, the parsing didn't work. We create a different output string with an error message. And we also message box that just to slam it in their face. And then we set the label output to our output string so it either contains the good message or the error. All right, let's run it. Build, rebuild solution. Check our error list. I don't see any errors. Well and good. So I'm going to run it. The green arrow start. And here we go. Button text box. I'm just going to click button and it's going to give me an error because the text box must contain a number. So I'm going to fix that. 100. 100 squared equals 10,000. Sure enough. 9 squared equals 81. We, I believe that's the end of the assignment. We don't quite have to stop there. Why don't we go ahead and make the user interface a little bit prettier? What do I mean by that? Well, it doesn't just have to say button. In fact, it was supposed to say something else. I don't recall. Maybe not. It needs to say calculate or square. Let's do that. I'm going to pull the button down there, get my properties window back, and make the text of it the content of it say square or squared either way and this thing should start with a valid number right it shouldn't say text box because if they then click squared they're gonna get an error message so clicking on text box and changing his contents I want it to have a valid starting value and I'm not seeing his, his values oh here it is text different name not content but text so there we go. His text is zero rather than text box. I'm going to drag this result button over here. Maybe that's not the best idea. I'm going to put it back where it was. I'm going to undo that change, but I want a, na a nice big equal sign. So I'm going to drag one more label out, and I'm going to make it either the word equals or an equal sign. See if we can get that up a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to click on the properties. It doesn't have a name. It doesn't really need to. It's just an equal. And then I'm going to go to content and make it say equals. So here's what my user interface looks like now. Zoomed out a little. I changed the text of that to squared. I changed the text of that to zero. I created the word equals. And then I have a text box that's going to display the result. Now let's run it again. Rebuild solution. Start. Here it is. Zero squared equals zero. All right, so I didn't need that word equals, did I? Because it's, it's repeated in there twice. This is looking kind of dumb. I'm going to close it, delete that word equals. So is your, um, so the content of the button like how we did label output dot content, that's not the same content as the XML property of the button? It is. We could change it here. We could find where it says squared on the button right there. We could change it here, like that. Or you could, e now if we go there, in the properties, it's also square. Well, like in our code for, um, like, go to the, the code for the button. How we have down where it says label output 
print dot content, we set that equal to a... We could. We could change the text for the button as soon as they clicked it. I don't know why we would, but, you know, we could do button calculate dot content with a capital C equals clicked. And now as soon as the button is clicked, it should say clicked. So it changed it to clicked as soon as. Okay. So you can change all the, pro uh, the properties programmatically as well as doing it in the properties panel. You see where it says initialize component? We could initialize that button's text to click me, something like that. And so eat, no matter what it says over here in content, excuse me, in properties or in the XML, as soon as it runs, that text should be initialized to click me. So you can fill this main window constructor with a whole bunch of things. You could be dropping buttons on there. You can be changing text. You could be hiding things. You know, there's a way to hide and, and to display, um, you know, controls. Button calculate dot. Why not letting me change it now? Oh, because it's outside of the uh, method. Button calculate dot visibility. Not sure if it's just as easy as setting it equal to false, but now the button should be. Nope, it's not. All right. Anyways, so you can control the visibility of the button, not through that syntax. All right. That is the end of that lesson. So then zip up the project and submit it to me. So I'm going to close the solution first. I'll come back and help. Close the solution first. Then I'm going to go into D2L. And you all know how to do this. I'm just doing it to remind you one more time. Go into C Sharp, Dropbox. Find a specific Dropbox. It's a number C, number C, tutorial C. Add a file. Upload. Find your Visual Studio projects, which I have moved from their default location. And then find the correct one. In my case, I called it Tutorial C. Right click and do Send to Compressed Folder. Now I have a zip file to upload. So I'm going to select that zip. Click Add, Submit, and we're good to go. So the homework assignment will be to take the tutorial application that you just met, made that takes one text box and you press a button and it squares it. You're going to add another text box to it and the button needs to multiply those two numbers together. So that ought to be pretty easy. You're just going to add a second text box. You're going to change the purpose of the... Uh, you're going to change the method for when the button is clicked to get strings and doubles from both text boxes, multiply those two doubles again, and then create the output string based on that. So hopefully not too hard.